Hello, Tom. Oh, Kirsty, what are you doing here? Same as everyone else. Buying veg. Right. Roy's not working this evening, so I said I'd cook dinner. Those leeks look good. Yeah, just picked yesterday. Lovely. So, how are things with you? Okay. Really? I'm not still prowling the nighttime streets of Borchester, if that's what you mean. Good. Doesn't mean I've abandoned the search. I'm just pursuing other channels. Look, I'm really sorry. I know I said I'd help you. But you didn't mean it, did you? Well? It's all right, Tom. You're not the only one who thought it was a fool's errand. Natasha told me. Oh. Though I have to say, she's been absolutely brilliant. I was so grateful for her support. You're very lucky to have her. Yeah, I know. Although, she gave me a really hard time for telling Harrison what you were doing. I bet she did. I didn't expect him to react quite so harshly. Still glad I did it. Even though he didn't find out what happened to Blake and the others. Just to realise how many homeless people there are out there. It's heartbreaking. Yeah, Natasha said. I've just popped a card through the letterbox for your dad. Oh, uh, thank you. It's tomorrow, isn't it? His 70th? Yeah, it's good of you to remember. Are you doing anything special? No, he's adamant he doesn't want to fuss, and anyway, social distancing and all that. Give him my best wishes, won't you? I will. Well, I need to get going. Nice to see you, Tom. And you, Kirsty. And you. Oh, sorry, Linda. We did say 11 o'clock. Uh, it's been one of those mornings. And I'm afraid I, I quite forgot I have an appointment in Darrington at 12. Could we possibly put this off for another day? Well, I've been waiting for 20 minutes in the cold. Oh, I'm and sorry. And this really won't take long. Well, yeah, OK. Good. Now. Do you recall a conversation we had at New Year? Um, Everyone was still reeling from the shock of discovering Philip Moss's true character. Yes, of course, Ah. when I was planning my sermon. And despite your best efforts, the village has simply not succeeded in shaking off this... this feeling of collective guilt. These things do take time. Well, what is needed is some kind of communal purging. How do you mean? Well, I haven't entirely thought this through yet, but do you recall my proposal for the art project, which never came to fruition, unfortunately? Ah. The washing of feet. Yes, such a potent image, Jesus washing the feet of disciples before the Last Supper. So, are you saying you want to follow through on the art project? In a way, but it needs to involve everyone. How do you mean? The people of Ambridge, they should come together and have their feet washed. What? All of them? Ideally, yes. But who by? You, of course. (laughs) What's so funny? (laughs) Come on, Linda. Washing 12 pairs of feet was enough for Jesus. You're suggesting I should wash several hundred. But that's the whole point. Single-handed? Well... If you think you can recruit some fellow members of the clergy, what about the bishop? You seem very close to him these days. I think that might be tricky. Oh, come on, Alan. You can be very persuasive when you put your mind to it. And if you think it through, Linda, we'd never get away with it. Why not? Well, for a start, we'd be breaking all the rules on social distancing. (laughs) Now, I'm, I'm sorry, but I really do have to go. If I am late, the person I am meeting will eat me alive. Natasha's really sorry that we can't lay on a proper party for you. I'm not. A quiet tea with the family, that'll suit me just fine. Right. What's the matter? Oh, it's nothing really, just... What? uh, There's a bit of a problem with Gran. What sort of a problem? Well... Oh, come on, Tom. (sighs) This is rather going to ruin the surprise, I'm afraid. But, you see, we thought, since we couldn't have a party, we'd get members of the family and some of your friends to each record a short video message for you. Oh. 
you'll see them all tomorrow, and they're lovely, all of them. Except, uh, except Grans. Oh, don't tell me. She was defeated by the technology. Uh, no, no. And all you've got are blurry pictures of that wretched cat of hers. Oh, I think Kate set it up for her. It's perfectly fine. It's just what she says. Well, what does she say? This is why I'm telling you now. So can I just play it for you? So you can make up your own mind? I just called at the vicarage, but Usha said you weren't home yet. I was going to give you a ring as soon as I got back. Uh Uh, I'm so sorry I had to rush off like that this morning, but I had a long-standing appointment with your Darrington counterpart, actually. My what? Uh, One of the church wardens is planning to put on a show later in the year. What kind of show? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. She was being a bit mysterious. Mm, Darrington has never produced anything of any note whatsoever. Uh, well, yeah, they're, uh, they're not in your league, certainly. But, um, anyway, you wanted to continue our discussion about foot washing? That? Oh, no, 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 I moved on from that. You were quite right, Alan. It would present certain logistical problems in the present climate. Yes, it would. But I've been casting around for something else that would bring everyone together and enable them to move on from recent events. And, of course, it was staring me in the face all the time. What? What else could it be but the magnificent canonical text of medieval England, that portal into the great tradition of English theatre, that joyous coming together of street theatre, tragedy and pantomime? What? The mysteries. The the what? The mystery plays, of course. Oh, right. (laughs) Like we did before. When was that? Eighteen years ago. But there was another production more recently. I remember a a huge cross being erected. Which was dropped on Jesus and broke his foot. That's all anyone remembers about that rather maladroit performance. Uh, Oh, I think there was rather more to it than that. It was certainly no match for what you and I achieved in our 2003 staging. Uh, So are are you suggesting we revive that production? Oh, no, 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 no. Times have changed, Alan. And so has the reason for doing the mysteries. This is to be a cleansing of guilt. The first steps on the road to deliverance. Okay. And I've discovered a rather impressive new version by someone called Colin Whitstable. Uh, uh, The only thing is, Linda, I do have four parishes to look after and I really don't feel I can commit to any sort of involvement in the production. I wasn't expecting you to co-direct again or indeed to participate in any way. Uh, Oh, Oh, no, I have someone else in mind to assist me, who I'm intending to recruit just as soon as I leave here. So why are you so keen to tell me about it? Redemption, Alan. It's a basic tenet of Christianity. And this project is all about redemption. So, I need the church's blessing. I need you to bless this venture, Alan. Will you do that for me? We hadn't planned a third child, so it was something of a surprise when we found out you were coming along. I say surprise. Actually, shock is more accurate. I remember vividly holding you in my arms for the first time. You were the image of Jack, even as a tiny baby. It was quite startling. That's enough, Tom. Turn it off. See what I mean? That is so typical of my mother. You try to organise something so kind and uh, and thoughtful as as a treat for me on my birthday. And what does she do? I have to admit, it cost me and Natasha a few sleepless nights. I'm not surprised. Wondering whether to show it to you or not. Well, I'm glad you did. But we decided it could ruin your birthday tea if you didn't know it was coming. It's all about her, isn't it? Nothing about me or or what I've done with my life. Uh, So could you... Well, think of an appropriate response. How do you mean? Uh, Make a joke of it or whatever. Because we'll have to show it tomorrow. Oh, no, you won't. Uh, Along with all the other videos, Gran will make a fuss if we don't. Your grandmother is not going to be there tomorrow. What? I shall tell her. She is not welcome in this house. Well, that's a great idea, Linda. I thought you'd retired as our resident theatre director. I was intending to take a step back, yes, but this... As I explained, 
is a healing project, something that is necessary at this particular juncture. I know what you're going to ask, Linda, and the answer's no, I'm afraid. You can't say that until you've heard what I'm proposing. You know what happened at Christmas? I had to pull out of the Lower Loxley show at the very last minute. For absolutely understandable reasons. There's no way I could stand up in front of an audience, have everyone staring at me. Kirsty, that's not what I'm asking you to do. Isn't it? No. The fact is, as you just pointed out, I have officially retired from village theatricals and I'm only taking this on because... Well, because Ambridge needs to be rescued from this slough of despond which has engulfed everyone. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm not asking you to appear in public. I want you to be my producer. Oh. To work behind the scenes, to do all the organising. Well, I'm very flattered to be asked, but... um... You are an essential part of my plan. Well, I'm sorry, Linda... But you're just going to have to find a new plan. Why don't you sleep on it? I'm not going to change my mind. I wish I hadn't shown it to you now. Oh, you did the right thing, Tom, and I'm grateful. But you can't uninvite her. It's my birthday party. I can do what I like. She'll be terribly hurt. Tom... I've been putting up with this for 70 years, being told I was an unwanted child, being compared to my sisters and found wanting, and never a word of praise for all the things I've achieved in my life. My wonderful marriage with your mum, our our lovely family, and not to mention the farm. We were real pioneers when we went organic all those years ago. And it's paid off handsomely. Absolutely. But what's the best thing my mum can say about me? That I've been a thorn in her side all these years. Well, that's it. I've had enough. I'm not going to take it any more. Hello? Emma, what are you doing here? Well, I just bumped into Toby, and he told me that you're the go-to person for building assault courses. <laughs> what? <laughs> he said you used to do it all the time back in your rugby playing days. <laughs> Well, not all the time, but, yeah, I've made a few. You've got to help me, Rex. I'm desperate. Oh, is this about the uh, the playground thing? I didn't realise what I was letting myself in for. I mean, I can knock up an obstacle course for the kids, no problem. But I got it into my head we could hire some stuff for the adult course. Ah, uh, cost you an arm and a leg. Yeah, well, I hope the suppliers might do us a deal. You know, for a good cause and a bit of free publicity, but no such luck. But... Isn't this supposed to be happening the day after tomorrow? Why do you think I'm desperate? Oh, look, I I really need to be moving the sales to fresh ground. This is for a really good cause, Rex. Raising money for this anti-slavery charity. Only people have been boycotting the playground because of, you know... Yeah, because it was revamped using slave labour. Yeah. So my idea was to get the kids back in by doing them an obstacle course. And then I had this idea of making one for the adults too, but... But you really didn't think it through. Please, Rex. You've got to help me. Happy birthday, Dad. Thank you. Are you having a good day? Very nice so far. Early morning tea delivered to my bedside, then downstairs to a full English breakfast. (laughs) Far more than I could eat. (laughs) But Henry and Jack helped me out with the sausages. Uh, I bet they did. And they both made me beautiful cards. Mm. Henry's is a real work of art, a perfectly drawn tractor with me in the driving seat. (laughs) (laughs) Well, he said it was me. But I've been ordered out of the kitchen now. I believe there's a cake being decorated. Uh, You may be sure of that. And I've had some wonderful presents. Do you know what Lillian and Justin got me? I can't imagine. A great western castle class engine. A what? For my model railway. Oh, of course. I'll show you this afternoon. It's just the most exquisite piece of miniature engineering. Must have cost a small fortune. Uh, About this afternoon, Dad, you haven't said anything to Gran, have you? About the video? You said you were going to speak to her. Yeah, yeah, I'll um, I'll sort it. It, I just wanted to check that you haven't changed your mind. You're still quite sure you don't want her to come this afternoon? Absolutely. Only... Well, it does make things a bit awkward for the rest of us if you and Gran aren't speaking to each other. Well, I'm sorry about that, Tom, but I've had enough. The slights, the...
disparaging remarks. I've been putting up with them for 70 years now. That video was the final straw. Yeah, OK, OK, Dad. Leave it with me. And what you do is you put the ladder horizontal, a couple of metres off the ground, mm. supports at either end, and the person has to jump up, grab hold of the rungs, and walk with their hands the length of the ladder. Oh, brilliant. It works best <laughs> if it's over a pond or something. Oh, well, it would have to be a huge long ladder to stretch across the village pond, so that ain't going to work. <laughs> yeah, the ducks would probably object, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah. So we need to borrow a good strong ladder from somewhere. Well, I should think home farm's your best bet. OK. And then we could have a vertical wall that they have to scramble up and over. Uh, What you'd need for that is masses of wooden pallets. Well, Eddie's got tons of pallets. Has he? Yeah, yeah, up behind the pole barn. There's a huge pile of them. Oh, great. Ooh, ooh, and a hurdle run. Oh, I'll tell you what would be really fun. If they were like jumps. I'm sure I could set that up. (laughs) So the contestants have to, you know, gallop round like horses. (laughs) I'm going to pinch that idea for the kids. And and can we get a hold of some old car tyres from somewhere? Yeah, Brookfield. They use them to weigh down the silage clamp, and they've already offered to lend us stuff. I was hoping David and his gang might help with the construction, but they're up to their necks with lambing. Right. What? Ah, uh, I'm not sure I want to be asking favours from Brookfield at the moment. Why not? Oh, David and Ruth are terminating my lease. Didn't you know? No way, no, I didn't. Yeah, I've decided they need the hollow tree lamb for something else, and... Well, it's all been a bit awkward between us one way and another. So me and my pigs have got to move. What are you going to do? Uh, Well, there's a council farm coming vacant. Oh, well, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'm putting in an application. A place of your own. Yeah, but uh, I keep looking at the application form and thinking, is it even worth the effort of filling it in? But it would be perfect, wouldn't it? So there'd be a whole bunch of people after it. But you've got to give it a go. Well, what can I say that'll make me stand out from the crowd? You'll think of something. You've got to follow your dreams, Rex, even if they might not work out. Lillian, what brings you here? <laughs> well, aren't I allowed to wish my brother a happy birthday? But I'll be seeing you this afternoon, won't I? Yes, yes, you will. But uh, about Oh, this uh, by the way, thank you for the present. <laughs> <laughs> Justin thought you'd like it. It's wonderful. <laughs> but look, uh, about this afternoon, I had a rather frantic call from Tom. Oh. Who uh, tells me you've decided Mum is persona non grata and you don't want her at your birthday party. Did he tell you why? Yeah, he shared the video with me. Well then. <sighs> look, I, I think you might be overreacting just a little bit. Oh, come on, Lillian. How would you like it if Mum said that about you on your birthday? <sighs> It was typical mum, banging on about how hard life was back when we were kids. But it was meant to be like a a birthday card to me, something cheery. She didn't mean to hurt you. Oh, that's what she always says. She didn't mean it. As if it's my fault for being oversensitive. Well, you know what she's like, Tony. She's not good at showing emotion. She says the first thing that comes into her head. Which was to tell me I was an unwanted child. You weren't planned, that's all. Doesn't mean you were unwanted. So you say. They were struggling to get by, living in that miserable little cottage. And the last thing she needed was another child. But that changed once you put in an appearance. She only had eyes for you. Jenny and I hardly got a look in. She said I was stubborn and made life difficult for her. Well, you weren't the easiest baby. I can remember you wailing for attention the whole time. Oh, did I? And I don't think you slept much. I remember Mum telling me how chuffed Dad was to have a son and how he vowed to mend his ways and look after you, but after a few weeks of you keeping him awake half the night, he was back on the booze. And that was my fault? Of course it wasn't. You know what Dad was like. And Mum... It took her a while to recover from having you. Giving birth isn't a picnic at the best of times. Oh, spare me. But, well, look, she probably never told you this, but she had a horrible time when you were born. They had to call the doctor in because you had the cord wrapped round your neck. Hmm. You very nearly died. And she wished I had. No! Oh, 
No, she fell in love with you as soon as she got to hold you. And, and Granny P was there. And? So, well, Mum was trying to explain her mixed-up feelings, how she hadn't wanted you, and the doctor was earwigging on the conversation, and, and, and he butted in and told Mum it was her having negative thoughts like that that had caused your difficult birth. What? In other words, if you died, it would have been her fault. Playing rugby for England. That was my dream when I was a kid. Oh, yeah? Mm. I was never likely to be good enough, but uh, then I had this awful injury, and that was it. I was in my 20s, and I honestly didn't have a clue what I was going to do with the rest of my life. So, why Feynman? Ah, it was all Toby's idea. With the geese? Yeah, and the hens. I just went along with it. It's only when I got the pigs, well, when I took them over from Neil, hmm. that I started to think, this is where I want to be, what I want to be doing. And what happens... Yet again, the rug's pulled from under me. Another dream gone. Oh, it's not, though, is it? You've got this council farm to look forward to. But if I don't get that, that's it. No, not necessarily. I don't know what I'll do, then. Listen, Rex, a while back I had a dream. I wanted one of the Beechwood houses, and I wanted it so badly. I was working all the hours God sends to save the money. For, like, three years I was doing hideous shifts in a blimmin' chicken factory. <laughs> but at the last minute... The whole thing fell apart. I remember. We lost our deposit, all the money we'd saved, and it nearly cost me my marriage. But it made me realise, well, eventually it did. It did take me a bit of time. But I, I realised I really didn't want to live in a laddie da Beechwood house. I was dreaming the wrong dream. And here I am, living with Ed in a mobile home in my in-law's backyard, and I honestly couldn't be happier. We couldn't be happier. And the moral of this story? Even if you don't get that council farm, something else will come along. And if all else fails, you can always set up a business designing assault courses. <laughs> well, there's <laughs> always that, I suppose. <laughs> Talking of which, we've got a list of everything we need for Thursday, but how are we going to actually get the thing built? Ah, leave that to me. I have a plan. I can't believe a doctor would say that to Mum. Well, that's how men thought 70 years ago. Women got blamed for everything. And it's not been an easy thing for her to live with. No. And, of course, the other problem was... Um, what? You were the absolute spitting image of Dad. Oh, don't remind me. So Mum was always afraid you were going to turn out like him. But I didn't, did I? I'm not a drunkard or a gambler, so why does she keep comparing me to him? Oh, Tony, you should hear what she's called me over the years. I mean, I admit that some of my life choices have been a bit unfortunate. Oh, Matt Crawford was rather more than unfortunate. Uh, don't you start. Oh, sorry, sorry. I have had it in the neck so often from Mum. I took her to task for it once and she said, and I've never forgotten this, she said... When you get used to expecting the worst, it always seems easier to be disappointed from the word go rather than getting your hopes up. But I've never given her cause to expect the worst. I've worked hard all my life and I've been a good and faithful husband for 46 years. I know, I know. But how many times have we had this conversation? What conversation? Oh, you know, about how Jenny was always the golden girl, yeah. the favourite child, and neither of us measured up. Uh, true. <sighs> Mum may say that she loves all three of us the same, but there have been times when I've found it quite difficult to believe. She always makes me feel like I've been a disappointment. But the fact is, Tony, she's 96 years old and she is not going to change now. No, I don't suppose she is. And how would you feel if she died tomorrow and the last thing you'd said to her was, I don't want you coming to my birthday party? Oh, oh Lillian. Mm. So, come on, little brother. Let her come this afternoon and have a happy day with the family. I know you've got a lot on, Helen, so thanks for coming out to meet me. Especially in this weather. Oh, Susan's minding the cheese vat, so for the next 20 minutes I'm all yours. And to be honest, I've been desperate to see you. After you told me about searching for those men, well... I'm sorry if I upset you. 
No, honestly, you didn't. And that's not why I wanted to see you. I'm so sorry I called you an idiot. You were just worried about me. Because I don't want you doing something reckless. I'm scared you'll get hurt. And I should have heard you out. Not pushed you away. Because oh, yeah, I pushed you away enough in the past and you always stuck by me. But you could have a full-on tantrum on the table here and you still couldn't get rid of me. <laughs> oh, thanks, <laughs> Ellen. Oh, what would I do without you? Well, for starters, you could have that last scone. <laughs> I've been sneaking slivers of Dad's cake every time I go into the kitchen. Oh, yeah, your Dad's birthday. How did it go? Yeah, really nice, actually. Tom played some lovely video messages from friends and family. Oh, well, I can't imagine Tony being a real party animal. <laughs> he certainly seemed to be in good spirits. He and Gran were kind of joking about together. I've never seen them get on so well. <laughs> anyway, Dad seemed quite touched by the whole thing. Oh, it's Mum. She wants to know where Jack's wellies are. Oh, do you need to go? If you need to go, it's fine. What I wanted to say, it can wait. No, no, it's fine. I'm sure Jack can manage without his wellies for a few more minutes. I'm all ears. All right. The last thing I want to do is drag you into this mess. So I'm only telling you this because I don't want to keep secrets from you. Kirsty, what is it? I don't expect you to approve of what I'm doing. I just want you to know. You're not still looking for Blake, are you? No. Well, yes, but not in the way you think. Kirsty, just tell me. OK. But you might not like what I have to say. Do you need any help, Clary? No, you're all right, me you love. Oh, I don't mind. I could do with a break from playing with Poppy's dolls. She's making me take photos of them getting married. Oh, she's that excited about me and Eddie renewing our vows. She keeps drawing pictures of the dress she wants to wear. I know, she's obsessed. I tried to tell her it was time to smash the patriarchy. Smash the what? I mean, why would anyone get married at all? It's just a certificate. Well, it's a bit more than just a certificate. How is it? People spend thousands on weddings, they buy a load of stuff to show off, and then they get bored and they get divorced. Not me and Eddie. (laughs) Yeah, well, you two are different. But not everyone can be Cinderella and Prince Charming and live happily ever after. (laughs) We've never been called that before. Now, this renewing of our vows, it's going to be a chance to celebrate again. Let our family and friends know how grateful we are. Well, that we are still in love after all these years. I don't see anything wrong with that. (sighs) Yeah, but... Well, what about your confetti, though? Confetti? It's just that plastic stuff is the same as glitter. It should be banned. It gets washed into the water system and it kills off the fish. Then maybe in the spring you and Poppy can collect flowers and dry them. Make your own confetti for us. Oh, we could mix rose petals with lavender. And have you given any more thought about being a bridesmaid, Mia? It really would mean a lot to me and Eddie. Mm, I don't know. Would I have to wear a big dress? You can wear a pair of dungarees for all I care. All right, I'd love to be your bridesmaid. Oh, Mia, that's made my day. You know, I can never get used to it. I swear it was only a minute ago you were a little girl like Poppy. And now here you are testing out these big ideas. They're not just big ideas. Plastic is choking our planet. I have to do something. People laugh at Gen Z like we're silly or something when it's not us who are messing up the world. So it's all organised. You're going tomorrow? Yes. Then you're not looking for my advice? No. Okay. Helen. What? You think it's a bad idea. I just can't see how visiting Gavin in prison will be anything other than awful. There'll be offices there. It's not like I'm putting myself in danger. Well, not in physical danger, maybe, but emotionally. Kirsty, are you sure you're ready for this? No, but this isn't about me. If it was, I'd still be curled up under a duvet feeling sorry for myself. I need answers, Helen. You think Gavin has them? Maybe. Oh, he agreed to me visiting. That must mean something. He lied to you, Kirsty. He lied to all of us. 
and I can't think of any reason to justify putting yourself through seeing him. I can think of three reasons. Kenzie, Blake and Jordan. We need to find them. Right. You think I'm mad? No. No. But I am worried about you. And a little bit impressed, too. How determined you are. <laughs> How pig-headed. Oi. Seriously, Kirsty, please be careful. A what? A vegan. But, but William said she was a vegetarian. He, he never said anything about a vegan. Does that mean she won't eat eggs? She says not. Not even in cakes? She says the whole animal industry is built around greed and that humans don't need to eat meat anyway. Oh, rubbish. Humans have eaten meat since the beginning of time. What are they teaching her in school, that cavemen went on in for lettuces? I don't know. All I know is I've got to work out how to make tonight's pasta bake without any milk, butter, cheese or eggs. Kirsty. Oh, I'm sorry if yesterday felt like an ambush. I should have given you more time to take in my proposal before pushing you for an answer. Linda, honestly, I didn't need more time. I'm really flattered you thought of me, but it's the last thing I feel like taking on right now. I see. Well, if you're that certain, I won't keep you. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to sound rude. No, no, no. no. I completely understand. Just because I am burning with passion for this project doesn't mean others will jump on board quite so quickly. You should heed Robert's advice. Which is? Gentle persistence. However gentle or persistent you are, the answer will still be no. Well, let's wait and see. What are Rex and Phoebe up to? Are those beer barrels? Oh, I believe they're building the charity obstacle course. Adults to race on the green, children in the playground. Oh, yeah, of course. Roy mentioned it. It looks like they've got half the village out helping. You see? Gentle persuasion in action. What do you mean? Well, Emma and Rex, sending out texts, asking for volunteers. Do something good for your community and get a shot of scruff gin as a reward. You could give me a whole crate of gin and it still wouldn't <laughs> persuade me to produce the mysteries. I'm sorry, Linda. Clary said I'd find you here. Just checking on the lambs. Oh, they're cute. Yeah, I suppose they are. I'm sorry, Eddie. What for? For what I said at lunch, about your ham sandwiches. Oh, that's all right. It'll take more than a teenager trotting off statistics to put me off me food. Yeah, it's not just statistics, though, is it? And, and it shouldn't matter if I'm a teenager or, or the Prime Minister. If what I'm saying is right, then it's my job to get you all to listen to me. Well, I'm just saying, you'll struggle to turn folk round here into vegans. Meat production, it's what farmers like us do for a living. Yeah, but maybe that needs to change. Look at Greta Thunberg. She ain't scared of speaking up, even if people don't like what she's saying. And if anyone around here thinks that I'm a silly teenager, well, I don't care. That is not going to stop me. Well, I don't think you're a silly teenager. Not at all. And if you're keen on protecting the Earth for future generations, then me and you, we're on the same side. I don't know many farmers who think it's a good idea to destroy the land they live off. Look, if we all keep on like this, eating meat, using plastic, wasting everything, then climate change is going to mess things up for everyone, including farmers. Look, I read this article saying that a kilogram of beef has the same carbon emissions as someone flying to New York and back. But uh, is that grass-fed beef? Or are you talking about American feedlot beef? I don't know, it just said beef. Because there's a difference. Brookfield Herefords and the Bridge Farm Angus's, they're grass-fed, more environmental, friendlier. OK, all I'm saying is that we should eat tofu instead, which is better than beef. Not for Sunday dinner, it ain't, with horseradish sauce and roast potatoes. Soya's carbon emissions are really, really low. I don't see any soya growing in this field, but uh, I do see spring lambs, free-range... Local? Just because it's local doesn't mean it's good. Barrow's local pigs are all stuffed inside tiny pens just so that the farm can make more money. 
Well, farms are businesses, Mia, with people to pay, and these people, they have families to feed. Yeah, but there won't be any families to feed once we've destroyed the planet. Now it's crazy how your generation just can't see it. And you thinking giving up meat and dairy is going to save us? I don't know. Maybe it's already too late. But at least I'm trying. Oh, yeah. You're definitely trying. (laughs) I'll give you that. (laughs) Well, I didn't expect to be helping Rex shift hay bales today. (laughs) Indeed. I'm glad I was only required to cheer you on from the (laughs) sidelines. Isn't it amazing how a little community spirit lifts one's own spirit? Linda, I promise you, Kirsty, this is not me manipulating or persuading. This is a friend, honestly putting it on the line. I need your help to produce the mysteries. But what if I'm not up to it? Courage, mon ami. <laughs> These plays will be the most ambitious most daring event that Ambridge has ever witnessed. And you will be marvellous at the helm. Crikey, Linda. What happened to gentle? (laughs) Who needs gentle when you can be bold? While I run the rehearsals and develop my artistic vision, you will be our fearless spearhead, forging a community path towards creative enlightenment. The mysteries will be around us, amongst us and within us. I'm sorry, Linda. It's still a no. It all sounds a bit mad. Magical is what it will be, Kirsty. Not mad. Magical. My meeting took longer than I thought, but I really am almost ready, I promise. How'd it go? Oh, he seemed keen, mostly on the ball such a blue... I said I'd email him my wholesale prices before lunch, which I've been trying to do while having a shower, eating toast and looking for Henry's trainers. Oh, oh, sounds like you could do without having to race around an obstacle course today. Oh, I promised Emma. And Henry spent all week building courses out of dining room chairs. <laughs> I doubt he'll be happy staying at home with Mum and Jack. Hey, then why don't I take Henry? You can get your work finished in peace. Oh, Lee, really? Are you sure? Of course. We'll send you photos of our triumphs to distract you from the dreaded admin. (laughs) Gavin, you look... I know. Might have to put in a complaint about the barber. Restaurants aren't up to much either. We don't have very long. They kept us waiting for ages out there. And, um, are you... I mean, are you, like, you all right? Gavin, I'm not here to talk about me. Right. And I'm not here on some kind of duty visit either. I stopped caring the minute Philip told me. Kirsty, I never wanted you to get hurt. Oh, stop. I don't want to hear it. The only reason I'm here is because I need to find the lads. Hi, Lee. You entering the Barrels and Bales race? All money raised goes to fight modern slavery. Of course. Sign me up. Though Tracy, the cricket boot camp horror bins, just told me that I don't stand a chance. (laughs) Says she's been balancing along the back of the sofa in preparation for the day. Are you and Henry entering the parent-child final challenge? I don't know. With not being his actual parent. Oh, don't worry about that. All right, then. Let me just check whether Henry's up for it. Actually, Emma, can you see him? I left him a Kira in the playground. Uh, oh, is that it? Uh, no. I think that's the lad who won swings and slides. He's not there, is he? He's probably gone to get an ice cream. Not without money. I'd better go and search for him. Can you keep an eye on the playground in case he comes back? Lee, I wouldn't panic. He's ten. He'll have gone off to play football in the field or something. Not without telling me. Lee, I really don't think he can have gone far. What was he wearing? Blue joggers and a... Uh, Ah, Emma, I can't remember. You must know something. Who bought them? Where they were taken to? I've told the police everything. I swear, if there was anything you else... You they could be in real danger. I know. I lie awake, a rack in my brains for something I've forgotten. Anything that could help. Look at me. Gavin, look at me. You've admitted what you did. Pleaded guilty in court. That shows you're a better man than he is. 
Kirsty, I'm not sure what it is you want from me. I want you to tell me what you told the police. All right. You went with your dad in the van. We had an address, a warehouse, where he'd set up the meeting with Victoria. Who's Victoria? The buyer. She's a sort of dealer. I don't know her last name, but she had a reputation for being... What? Ruthless. And that wasn't enough to wake you up? Make you do something to stop him? I tried. I actually begged him to change his mind. But he shut me down. So you carried on following his orders? I know how pathetic that makes me seem. I helped Blake get his bag into the back of the van. And then I stood there and watched Dad sell them. Just like cattle. Any luck? Nothing. I've been everywhere. I asked everyone. And no one's seen him at all? Kira said he was there one minute and then just... She said he vanished. Did you speak to Rex? What? No. Look, he's only been gone about ten minutes or so. Let's just stay calm and, and make a plan. I'm wasting time. I should phone the police. No, Lee, I, I don't think we're there yet. Look, it's, it's horrible, that feeling, when you lose sight of your child. But I, I promised you he'll turn up soon. He's not my child, though, is he? I told Helen I'd look after him. I promised her. Lee... And now I'm going to have to phone her and tell her... Lee, look... Emma, what am I going to tell her? Nothing. You won't have to tell her nothing, because look. Across the green, isn't that Henry? With my George and his mates. Is it? It is. What did I say? Panic over. Oh. Henry! I nearly lost it when we got home that night. I came so close to telling you. I wish you had. Yeah. Well, in the end, I bottled it, didn't I? Ran away instead. Where to? Where did you go? I slept on a maid's sofa the first night. So what did you do after that? Packed up my rucksack. Slept where I could. You mean sleeping rough? No one deserves that. You get to see the best and worst of people out there. I mean, when your socks are wet and your back aches, it's like you're never going to be dry again. I didn't mind the names they called me. I called myself worse. But I didn't like it when the pubs checked out. Blokes with a few beers in them, they're unpredictable. And we were pretty much fair game. Oh, Gavin, I had no idea. I'm not after sympathy. I just want you to know how it changed me. I thought so much about Blake. I started to understand why he stayed with us. As long as we weren't kicking him or urinating on him while he was asleep, he thought we were heroes. Someone offers you food and shelter, you do anything they ask of you, if you're desperate enough. So what exactly happened? I told Henry to wait for me in the playground with Kira while I popped across to the ball. Ah, I see. I trust you with my son and you abandon him so you can go to the pub. Only to register for the races. I was literally two minutes at most. Lee, I'm joking. Emma's texted me already. It's fine. It sounds like nothing. It wasn't nothing. Henry followed some of the big boys off the green. I'd no idea where he'd gone. But Emma said George brought him back as soon as they heard that you were looking for him. I couldn't help thinking the worst. You know, every awful scenario. Oh, I hope you told Henry how much trouble he caused you. If one of my girls had pulled that stunt, they certainly wouldn't be sat on a swing eating ice cream right now. Uh, you brought Henry an ice cream? With a flake. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's a novel approach to discipline. What was I supposed to do? Shout at him? Send him to his room? That's exactly what I would have done. Because you're his mum. He expects that from you, whereas I'm just good old Lee. And the fun one. I don't get to behave like... His dad? No. You know he adores you. But that's not what this is about. It's more about... Well, I think we need to have a proper talk. About what? About how we behave with each other's kids. We need to decide on some ground rules. Okay. Because I don't think it's something we can just make up as we go along. 
I've hurt so many people. You, my mum, dad. You still care what he thinks? I grasped on him. I tell myself I don't mind if he never speaks to me again, but he's still my dad. Oh, Gavin. He's pleading not guilty. That means it's going to go to trial. I know. I heard. And I won't be sentenced to last over, so... Until then, i just got to wait. Find a way to live with myself. At first, I used to like it that the lads were scared of me. Made me feel better about myself. To have a bit of power over them. I know. It's disgusting. But there's no point sugarcoating it. I appreciate that you're being honest. I do. It took a long time to get Dad's voice out of my head. I hardly questioned what he was doing. I just believed I was weak and he was strong. I only started to wake up to what we were actually doing when I lived with the lads in lockdown. Imagine needing to live with people to stop treating them like animals. Blake is so kind. I, I'm so desperate to be helpful. I mean, he, he'd leap up to fetch the ketchup if he saw one of us needed more. Uh, and then there was this week when Jordan learned how to make scrambled eggs. He was so proud of himself. He made them for every meal, like breakfast, lunch, dinner. Me and Kenzie started teasing him, making egg jokes. It was not very egg-sighting, Jordan. Blake got really upset with us, but I have never seen Kenzie laugh so much. He, he sent himself to the naughty step. <laughs> you talk about them as if they were your friends. Because that's how it felt. It, it crept up on me afterwards. Once I'd moved out, I missed them. It was like a, a light had flicked on inside me and, and I could see everything for what it was. I knew what we were doing was wrong. And it made me sick. But you still carried on. Yeah, I know. And you kept lying to me. I, I didn't know how to get out without making things worse. I was scared. And I was a coward. It's that simple. Oh, looks like time's up. Yeah, checking out time. What happens next? Well, maybe catch a movie, have a few pints. <laughs> but really, what will you do? Will you be all right? I know how to keep myself out of trouble. That's good. But if you ever need anything... I don't, especially not from you. <sighs> OK. No, that, that, that came out wrong. What I meant was, I don't deserve your sympathy. Or your time. But I'm glad I got the chance to see you. And to say I'm sorry. Gavin. Yeah? If it's all right with you, I'd like to come and visit you again sometime. Oh, you don't have to. I know. But it can't be easy in here. I mean, it's not easy out there. It's just, what I'm trying to say is that it must be lonely. There's worse things than being alone. Yeah, maybe. I'll keep my head down and when I get out, I've already made up my mind. I'm going to be a better man. My own man this time. You know what? I believe you, Gavin. Thanks. That means the world to me.